Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Spiros Rangos, and um, I'll be the coordinator um, this um, evening. Just because um, our speaker is the driving force and the organizing power behind this meeting, Irini Fotini Viltanioti. Uh, you all uh, know her, I'm uh, pretty sure. Uh, but in any case, I'll um, say a few introductory uh, words about Irini. Now, Irini is an associate professor of ancient philosophy in the University of Crete, and um, she holds a PhD and a DEA in philosophy from the University of Brussels, and uh, her first degree was from the University of Athens. Now, uh, she has um, published a book uh, which is uh, called uh, L'Harmonie des Sirens du Pythagorisme Ancien à Platon, uh, about uh, a, a book that has been uh, awarded uh, also a prize uh, as a, a best um, PhD thesis uh, in Brussels, if I remember correctly. And she's also the editor or co editor of Divine Powers in Late Antiquity. Uh, published in Oxford by Oxford University Press in 2017, and also Logic and Exegesis, the Logical Reconstruction of Arguments in Greek Commentary in the Greek Commentary Tradition, uh, that's to 2021, and uh, we expect uh, the New Light Neoplatonic Studies in honor of the 20th anniversary of the Bibliotheca Alexandrina, uh, to be published, or uh, actually it has already been published uh, uh, a few uh, weeks uh, ago. No, uh, because I, I see that's uh, um, 11, in... no, no, sorry? Uh, oh, logic and exegesis, yes, but... The new, the new light uh, was due uh, in... No, uh, it is January. forthcoming, it is forthcoming in spring. It's forthcoming, okay, great. Now, um, it's quite clear that the initiative, the idea, and also uh, the huge amount of time and energy that has gone into uh, the Athens Alexandria uh, Forum with uh, the lectures, with the conferences, um, um, is all due to Irene. But now, this evening, Irene is going to be our speaker and she will present uh, a paper called Plato in uh, Plotinus, apparently Ernad 3.4 on our allotted guardian spirit. There's a handout. Uh, sorry, uh, you, you don't hear me? There's, there's somebody who said that uh, doesn't hear me. Do, do you hear me? Okay, this. Um, okay. Uh, so if, uh, there's a handout which you may have uh, already downloaded from the site, but I can also uh, send to all of you uh, in the chat, right? So um, here at the end, uh, Irini, I think the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Spiro, for this introduction and thank you all for being here today. Um, there is a handout, as uh, Spiros has just said, uh, but uh, I am also going to uh, share screen. So please uh, um, bear with me for a moment. Um, so um, my topic today uh, will be uh, the way um, Plotinus uh, interprets uh, Plato in Enead 3.4 on our allotted guardian spirit. So uh, in Enead 3.4, Plotinus exposes uh, his novel, uh, Demonology. And according to uh, Porphyry, uh, this treatise was written um, soon after or as a result of uh, the um, conjuration of uh, Plotinus' uh, guardian spirit in the temple of Isis in Rome. And here is um, how uh, the story uh, goes, according to Porphyry. So uh, Plotinus certainly uh, possessed by birth something more than other men. 
this reminds us of, of Socrates, although Plotinus is not uh, interested in the uh, demonion uh, of Socrates. A certain Egyptian priest who came to Rome and made his acquaintance through a friend wanted to give a display of his wisdom. So he asked Plotinus to come and see a visible manifestation of his own companion spirit evoked. Plotinus readily consented and the conjuration took place in the temple of Isis. The Egyptian said it was the only pure spot he could find in Rome. When the demon was summoned to appear, is autopsian, which must be a technical term for that kind of, of rituals, um, a god came, Theos, who did not belong to the race of demons. And the Egyptian said, O oh, blessed are you, who have a god for your demon and not a companion of the subordinate order. So a few lines further, Porphyry adds, it was a reason of this kind that led Plotinus to write the treatise on our allotted guardian spirit, in which he sets out to explain the differences between uh, spirit companions. So uh, now, irrespectively of its accuracy, uh, this testimony preserved by Porphyry, which could go back to, to Amelius, who uh, we know uh, was interested uh, in, in uh, religious uh, ceremonies and uh, related stuff, may be understood. So this testimony may be understood as pointing to an attempt to provide some empirical support uh, for Plotinus' doctrine in accordance also, as Mark Edwards has proposed, with Porphyry's uh, conviction uh, that no ritual uh, is necessary for attaining uh, evdemonia. However, although uh, popular beliefs and religious beliefs uh, do stand in the background, Plotinus' main uh, concern in NA 3.4 is to ground uh, his uh, demonology not in ritual or in uh, experience uh, more generally, uh, but in Plato's authority. And for this purpose, Plotinus endeavors to reconcile uh, relevant uh, Platonic references drawn uh, from uh, various dialogues, such as uh, the Timaeus, uh, the Republic, the Fido, the Phaedrus, the Kratilos, and the Symposium. So uh, my aim, uh, sorry. Ah. My, my aim today uh, will be uh, to reconstruct the way in which Plotinus uh, builds his innovative no doctrine by combining Platonic elements uh, drawn from these dialogues. To do this, I shall read selected passages which contain some of Plotinus' key ideas and the Platonic sources quoted or echoed in these passages in light of one another. I shall use the context and the connections Plotinus establishes between Platonic references as a starting point for unfolding Plotinus' interpretation. Uh, I uh, would like uh, to argue that uh, a twofold concern underlies the common thread running through uh, what Plotinus takes to be the reconstruction of Plato's original doctrine. On the one hand, an expansive reading of Plato's demonology, uh, a reading that is which reflects Plotinus' expansive ontology, the view uh, that uh, uh, the soul, in a way, contains all things, the forming principles of all things, and which anticipates uh, Plotinus' anthropology in Enead 6, 7, and 1, 1. And on the other hand, the view that a demon is inactive on the ontological level which it supervises and which is immediately inferior to the level of the demon's own activity. So our guardian spirits are inactive on our level so that we can be 
both responsible uh, for our choices and uh, capable uh, of changing them. So uh, Plotinus doctrine can uh, be summarized uh, as follows. Our human intellect or higher soul is the residence of a demon who, however, can be succeeded by a demon of higher rank if we choose to live on a higher level, re level of reality than that of our lower soul. In fact, each time the demon will be situated one level above the level on which we are active, so that if we live according to our higher soul, we have intellect as our guardian spirit, while the soul who has been united with intellect has the one as its supervisor. Thus, the residence of the demon extends from the level of human intellect up to the one. The level on which we live is our choice. We can live or be active and regin is the verb on the level of sense perception, which is the lowest level of activity possible for a human being, when our higher soul remains inactive and asleep, as it were, unconscious of its true capacities. In that case, our demon abides on the level of the higher soul or our rational principle, but we can also choose to live on a higher level in which case our demon is of a higher rank as well. It is a god, Theos, on the level of intellect, or even the one itself. Thus, by choosing the level of our life, we also choose our demon. As Plato puts it in the Republic, the responsibility is ours, uh, the divine is not to be blamed, etia elomenum Theos anetios. In all cases, the demon presides over our activity without interfering with it. It is inactive in our, on our level, albeit being, of course, active on its own level, which is immediately superior to ours. So in this light, the demon of Plotinus, who lives on the level of the higher soul and becomes intellect, as in the opening of Enad 4.8, thus preparing union with the one, is a god on the level of intellect in close connection with the one. At times when Plotinus here below is united with intellect, his demon is the one itself, the god overall, or Theos or Epipasi, as Porphyry calls him, who, according to Porphyry, Plotinus having become one with his companion intellectual god, also approached and with whom he was united four times while Porphyry was with him. This is the life of Plotinus, chapter 23. So the snake, Dracon, which uh, as Plotinus' doctor and friend, Eustochius of Alexandria, told Porphyry, crept under the bed on which Plotinus was lying and disappeared into uh, a hole in the wall upon Plotinus' death may also be understood as a manifestation of that God who had been Plotinus' companion, or rather of Plotinus' soul now united with that God, since here below Plotinus could already rise to the level of intellect and be God. As Pavlos Kaligas also points out, the Alexandrian doctor would have correlated the serpent with the Alexandrian belief in the snake shaped agathodemon, uh, identified with Knef or called Knufis in Greek, and with Serapis, the tutelary divinity of Alexandria. So, according to the oracle given to Amelius, Apollo could address Plotinus as demon man once now attaining the more divine lot of a demon uh, by joining the most blessed demoness belonging to the race of Zeus, that is, the Olympian gods, probably, together uh, with Plato and Pythagoras. 
Uh, this is the chapter 22 of the life of Plotinus. So Plotinus was God here below when he united, he, when, when was also God here below when he united with intellect. And he uh, is also God there. This is what uh, Porphyry uh, seems uh, to tell us. Now, as Plotinus himself puts it in Enead 3.4, who then becomes a demon? He who was one here too. And who a God? Certainly, who was one here? For what was active? in a man, to energisan, directs Agi, the man, after death, since it ruled here too, a daftha i womenon. Is this then the demon to whom he was allotted while, while he lived? No, but that which is before to pro to what is active. For this presides inactive over the man, but that which comes after it is active. So the demon is not what is active in a man and leaves a man, uh, but is to be identified with the ontological level that is immediately superior to what guides a man. So if the acting principle is that by which we have sense perception, the spirit is the rational principle. But if we live by the rational principle, the demon is what is above this, presiding inactive and giving its consent to the principle which works, synchoron to ergazomeno, literally uh, giving place to the principle at work uh, so that it may act according to its, its own choices. So it is rightly said that we shall choose for we choose the principle which stands above us according to our choice of life. So this passage uh, combines elements from uh, various uh, Platonic uh, dialogues, uh, namely the Fido, the Republic and the Kratilos. So the idea that in the other world, one becomes what she or he already is here below uh, comes from the Kratilos, and this is uh, T3 on the handout, which I will not read. And this is because, irrespectively of whether a soul is associated with body or not, it has its own activity that defines uh, that soul's rank in the hierarchy of being. There is also a reference to the passage of the Fido, that is T12 on the handout, Um, um, from which uh, Enead 3.4 takes uh, its title, that is Perituili Hotos Imas Demonos. And as Pavlos Kaligas points out, the accusative Imas uh, in the title chosen by Porphyry for uh, this Plotinian treatise echoes the object of the verb Ilihi from Lanjano, which means to receive by lot uh, in the Fido, namely, uh, the object is each man, Ekaston, Zonda, when alive. Indeed, according to the myth of fear, and this is T4 on the handout, each soul chooses its de demon after drawing uh, lots so that the order according to which the choice uh, will be made uh, is determined. Uh, so this is uh, the passage from the Republic. Now, when the souls arrive, they had to make their way immediately toward Lachesis. There, a prophet first made them stand in order and then took from Lachesis lap lots and examples of lives, clearus kevion paradigmata. Then he went up to a high platform and said, This is the word of Lachesis, the maiden daughter of Anagi, souls that live for a day. 
This is the beginning of another deadly period for the mortal kind. No demon will select you by lot, Lixete in the Greek, but you will be the one to choose a demon. Let the one who draws the first lot, O Protos Lachon, be the first to choose a life to which he will adhere by necessity. But virtue has no master. By honoring or, or dishonoring it, each will have a greater or lesser share of it. Let the one who chooses be responsible. God is blameless. And then when all the souls had chosen their lives, according uh, to the order of their lots, they approached uh, Lachesis and she gave them the demon, the demon they had chosen so that it may accompany them as a guardian through their lives and as fulfiller of their choices. So in this passage, uh, we can uh, uh, focus on two points. The first point is that the choice is made within the framework of a wider order, which, uh, however, uh, does not limit our freedom of choice. The second element that is important to Plotinus is that the demon um, cannot change, but uh, accompanies us throughout uh, our uh, life. But Plotinus also um, correlates this passage of the Republic with uh, Timaeus 90a on the most uh, lordly kind of our soul, uh, which is, uh, so he correlates this passage of the Republic with Timaeus 90a uh, in T5 of the handout. Timaeus uh, 90a is uh, T6 of the handout. Uh, so Plotinus does this to support the view. Uh, so he, he brings in the Timaeus to support the view in T5 that uh, the demon is not completely uh, outside the soul. We shall uh, return to this point to the last part in the last part of, of the talk. But for the moment, it is important that by evoking uh, uh, the Timaeus, uh, Plotinus is able to locate uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the demon in the Scala Nature, because uh, while other Platonic dialogues mostly tell us what a demon does, um, the 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 Timaeus also tell us something about uh, what a demon is, correlating it with the nature of the soul, and thus I think on Plotinus' reading, uh, setting light um, on the intermediary position uh, of uh, demones uh, according to uh, the symposium, for in the Timaeus. Uh, there is a God, and then this God gives us uh, the most lordly kind of our soul, which is a demon. Likewise, in the symposium, uh, there is a demon that is uh, immediately inferior to a God and between a God uh, and a man. So let us start our more detailed discussion from uh, these very passages of the Timaeus in order to define uh, the place of uh, the demoness in Plotinus' hierarchy of being. We shall also uh, return to uh, this passage and uh, to Plotinus' uh, reading of it when we discuss the way uh, in which we are related to our guardian spirit in the last part of the talk. So as we have mentioned, the lowest level possible of a demon is the level of the higher soul. Plotinus finds this idea in Timaeus 90a, which is T6, and here he takes Plato to identify our governing kind, uh, kind of soul as a demon that God has given to us. 
And here are Plato's words, or, or rather an attempt to translate them. And as regards the most lordly kind of our soul, we must conceive of it in this wise. We declare that God has given to each of us as his or her demon, that kind of soul which is housed in the top of our body and which raises us, seeing that we are not an earthly plant, but a heavenly plant up from earth towards our kindred in the heaven. And herein we speak most truly, for it is by suspending our head and root from that region whence our soul's generation first arose from intellect that the divine keeps upright the whole body uh, from, in, for, from intellect for Plotinus. So as I have argued elsewhere, Plotinus takes uh, the demon that God has given to us to be our reasoning principle or human intellect which derives from intellect and which by being illumined by intellect can be united with intellect. Thus our soul or the we in the sense of our higher soul but also in the sense of our soul more generally and by extension the we in the sense of the joint entity to which the virtues from habit and training belong, as Plotinus writes in 1.1, may be said to be a heavenly plant, since our better part or higher soul remains rooted in intellect from where it never entirely descends. So I take our higher soul to correspond to what in Enneard 6.7 Plotinus calls the man there, the soul of this kind, o anthropos eki, uh, iti afti psychi, situating it between the man in intellect, o en o anthropos, the man uh, who contemplates the man before all men, as Plotinus says, that is intellect contemplating himself. So I take uh, uh, the higher soul to correspond to the man there, the soul of this kind, um uh, uh which Plotinus situate between the man in intellect and the later man uh the imitation. I also understand the soul of this kind and the man in intellect as levels of actualization of the true man or Alithis Anthropos of Ened one one and this is uh, T8 on the handout, which I uh, shall not read here. These two levels, namely the soul of this kind and the man in intellect, correspond to demones of of different uh, of different uh, kinds, namely to demones and to demones who are rather gods, say, the former, that is the demones who abide at the level of the higher soul are, as I take Plotinus to explain in Ennead 6, 7, with 57 on the handout, the kind of demones that Plato call, calls demones in uh, Timaeus 90a, in the Symposium, that is T9, and in the Phaedrus, uh, that is T10 on the handout, where he briefly distinguishes between gods and demones uh, uh, following the chariot of, of Zeus. So Plotinus' interpretation seems to be that Plato thinks that the gods are demones too, but that because they are diviner than uh, lower demones, Plato calls them gods as distinct from uh, lower demones, uh, which he simply uh, calls uh, demones. So, uh, as we read in T7, the demones that Plato calls demones are really a kind of demones. Uh, but the race uh, of demones is wider, according to Plotinus. Uh, this is what Plotinus thought that Plato meant, embracing gods who are higher demones, 
uh, at the level on the level of intellect and the one uh, that is uh, the god overall. So men depend upon low, lower demones, which are intermediary entities between men and gods, as in Plato's Symposium, whereas uh, lower uh, demones depend upon gods having uh, the god overall, the one, as uh, the principle which stands uh, above them. So if we have a look at the part of T7, uh, this could perhaps be useful. So Plotinus says the soul is all things, but it acts according to uh, different uh, logi at different times. Um, this is an idea that uh, we also famously find in uh, 3, 4, and this is T, uh, T11, I think, on the handout. Uh, so uh, the soul has all things, but it can activate different forming principles so that it can make uh, entities that uh, correspond to different ontological levels. But soul itself extends from uh, the one down to the limits of all life, as is said in 3.4. Um, uh, and this is what uh, Pablo Scaligas calls Plotinus expansive psychology. So when it is pure, when the soul is pure, and before it is debased, it wills man and is man. For this is more beautiful, and the soul makes what is more beautiful. And it also makes demones, which are superior, belonging to the same kind as that uh, of the soul, uh, uh, which uh makes uh man uh, so uh demones are uh, superior to ma to men in the sense of man the imitation uh so the the demones uh correspond as we we saw uh to uh the man there, they may be superior, but they uh, they belong to the same kind as that of the soul which makes man, because in all these cases, it is thus the soul that activates uh, principles corresponding to different, forming principles corresponding to different ontological levels. And the man, and the man, who is above the soul, which makes man, is more of a demon. And who is even higher uh, is a god. So here, uh, the man who is above the soul, which makes man, is uh, uh, the man uh, there. And it is a, he is a man, but uh, he is uh more uh of, of of a demon because in that case the soul activates a higher uh forming principle and who is even higher uh that is the man in intellect is a god and the demon is an imitation of a god dependent on the god just as a man is dependent on the demon for that on which man is dependent is not called god uh, this is a reference uh, to the symposium, to T9 on the handout, where uh, Plato says that God does not mingle with man. A God, a man, and a demon differ from one another in the same sense in which souls differ, differ from one another. So they are all souls, but they are souls of, that activate different forming principles from the forming principles that the, that are available to them and all logoi are available to the soul although they belong to the same order so they are all souls but of different uh, uh, of different uh, levels they they occupy different different places in the ontological hierarchy and one should call the demoness that plato calls demoness a kind 
of demones. So I understand this passage differently than uh, Armstrong. So laying the demonas, us ficino platon demonas, idos demonon. So uh, that is, uh, Plato, Plotinus uh, here on my reading is saying that uh, the intermediary entities uh, who, which uh, Plato places under uh, the gods and above uh, human beings are only a kind uh, of, of demoness, uh, namely uh, the lower uh, demoness. And this is, uh, but there are other kinds as well, that is, gods can be demoness as well, but of a higher rank, and the one itself, according to Plotinus, can also be the uh, um, guardian spirit of, 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 of a god united with intellect. So this is what I call the expansive reading of Plato's uh, demonology, and this is a term that I borrow from uh, Pablo Scaliga's expansive psychology, because this expansivity of, of the demon, in a way, mirrors, I think, the um, uh, expansivity, uh, uh, the expansive character of uh, Plotinus' uh, psychology. Uh, so Plotinus the monology, uh, like his ontology, is tripartite. There are lower demon lower demones, then gods, and then the one. His demonology overlaps with his anthropology to the extent that the region of the true man coincides with that of uh, demones and gods eventually attaining union with the one. And uh, as uh, we have seen, uh, his demonology is uh, very closely uh, related to his uh, psychology. For what else are demones but souls of higher rank, including gods living on the level of intellect and attaining union with the one, who has been assigned the noble task of presiding inactive over the activity of souls of lower rank, thus forming a climax going from the limits of humanity up to the one. As explained in NN 3.4, and this is the parallel of the text of uh, 6, 7 we have just read, this is T11 on the handout, Soul occupies a vast place, extending from the intelligible heaven down to the borders of existence. Or, as Plotinus says, soul is many things, and all things, both the things above and the things below, down to the limits of all life. But our higher soul... is heavenly because the man in intellect is what we most truly are. Thus, as a plant grows in the ground, we depend upon intellect. But while the roots of a plant naturally grow away from light, our true nature is the light of intellect, towards which we turn and to which we aspire to return. Uh. Now I, I come to the third part of, of the talk, uh, which concerns the idea is not that the demon is not active on uh, the level uh, he uh, it uh, supervises, but uh, although he or it is active uh, on its own level, it is a nigemon as uh, uh, Plato uh, puts it. And for this idea, I think that Plotinus uh, evokes the Fido. So as we have seen in, in, in T2, according to Plotinus, irrespectively 
of whether we are associated with body or not, we are what directs us, what are ye, and we can become what stands above us, that is, perhaps, to take the image of the Phaedrus, the spirit or the God we follow, who, however, is inactive on our level, and yet a, a leader, an hegemon, on his own or her own level. And this is the 10 on the handout from the Phaedrus. So Plotinus explains in T2 that uh, what was active in a man uh, during his lifetime also directs Agi, that man, after death. And that what directs the man is not the uh, guardian spirit, not the demon, but is rather situated uh, below the demon, meta afton, uh, so that the demon presides inactive, a festic and argun, over our, our uh, activity, over the man. So, in, in, in T13 then, If this is so, uh, Plotinus asks, if this is so, if what is active in a man directs the man, and what directs the man is not the demon, but is uh, on the odological level that is immediately inferior to that of the demon, why does Plato in the Fido say that the demon directs? Uh, the passage of the Fido to which Porphyry refers, uh, Plotinus refers here, uh, is uh, T12 on the handout, the very same passage uh, from which Porphyry uh, borrows um, uh, the title of 3 uh, 4. So I'm, I'm reading the passage of the Fido. And so it is said that when a man dies, the demon of the man who had received the living man as its lot, Osperzon da Ilhi, directs Agi to a place where the dead are gathered together. Then they are judged and depart to, to the other world with the leader, Iemonos, whose task is to conduct tighter those who come from this world. And when they have there gathered their due and remained through the time appointed, another leader, Iemon, brings them back after many long periods of time. And the journey is not as Telephos says in the play of Eschylos, for he says a simple path leads to the lower world, but I think the path is neither simple nor single. For if it were, there would be no need for leaders, Iemonon, since no one would miss the way to any place if there were only one road. But really, there seems to be many forks of the road and many windings. This I infer from the rites and ceremonies practiced here on earth. So, referring to these passage, Plotinus in T13 asks, why then does the demon direct Agi? For the problem here is that he has just explained in T2 that what Agi, what directs, is not the demon. The demon presides inactive, a festic and argun. What directs is just below the demon. It is us who direct. So why in the Fido, Plato says that the demon, the demon directs? That's a problem that has to be solved. And Plotinus' uh, answer goes as follows. So why, I'm reading uh, T13, why then does the demon direct? Now uh, I understand the syntax uh, in a different way than 
uh, it has been understood until now, to my knowledge. Uh, so I translate as follows. Why then does the demon direct? Of course, it is not possible that the dead man directs himself, but before that, he could direct when he was alive. But when he ceases to live, it is possible that he hands over the activity to someone else. Since he, since he has died, the man has died with respect to his life that corresponded to the activity. And the demon then wants to direct and having become dominant, it leaves itself and has itself to another demon. But if it is weighted down by the force of its bad character, this weighting down contains in itself the penalty. So uh, concerning the syntax, here I take the accusative ton viotefsada to be the subject uh, rather than the object of uh, uh, the infinitive eigen. So ukestin, it's an impersonal uh, expression, uh, eigen, the subject, who directs uh, uh, the, 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 the dead man, the man who has, uh, who has uh, lived. And I also take uh, a the, the, the demon to be the subject of, uh, of a theli. So Plotinus' answer seems to be that this is because the entity that has been the demon of a particular man and has presided inactive over that man's activity, when that man dies, may be active in another man who will in turn have another demon. So after a man's death, his or her demon can direct not the dead man who when was alive directed himself uh, and of whom uh, the spirit has been uh, the demon, but another man who, according to uh, Plato's reincarnation doctrine, comes from the dead and in whom the demon will now be active and whom it will now direct as opposed to its previous inactivity. So each demon, albeit inactive on the level of the man whom the demon has received by lot, directs Agi and is a leader, an Igemon, on its own level. Uh, the gods and uh, the demones of the Phaedros are Igemones on their own level. The dead who in the Fido depart to the other world are, according to Plotinus, as I understand him, souls that return here below uh, to this uh, lower world, which is the world that has many forks and many windings and where one can uh, miss the way having previously been demoness of other souls here below and inactive here below. Um, as for the gathering and the judgment mentioned in the Fido, uh, which happens before returning be here below, uh, it evokes, uh, of course, the myth of ear. But now, of course, being active and living its own life, uh, the demon, which uh, before had, which presided over the activity of a man, and who now directs the activity of another man, will be responsible for its own choices, and the story will start over. The mobility of Plotinus' universe and divine hierarchies is then such that, as a result of bad choices, a fallen, uh, as it were, demon may end up being subordinated 
to a supervisor of a much lower rank in comparison to the rank that the demon once occupied. Here, Plotinus could have thought of Empedocles, whose exile from the gods he mentions uh, in Enead, uh, the first chapter of Enead uh, 4.8, or even of various uh, myths, such as, for instance, Apollo's uh, servitude to Admitos. On the contrary, if it is able to follow the demon above it, the entity that has been the demon of a man and is now, or even at the same time, active in another man, ascends towards that higher demon whom he can or she can follow. But as we have just said, demoness can also fall and cease to be demoness. They can even live the life of a beast as a result of their bad choices, as they can also ascend towards beauty and the, go the good, thus uh, reaching the heights. And now I come to the, the last part of my talk. Um, becoming a demon or even a demon who is a god on the level of intellect is the soul's own achievement, not its uh, uh, guardian spirit's achievement. For as Plato, as Plotinus uh, writes um, in chapter six of Enad uh, 3 4, uh, the man would not have been a spuveos if he had the guardian spirit as a partner in his own activity. If uh, the demon, the, 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 the activity of the demon and the activity of our soul uh, overlap, uh, then uh, how uh, could our soul uh, be uh, responsible uh, for its uh, choices and its uh, acts. So the demon should be at least partly outside the soul. But on the other hand, the demon cannot be entirely outside the soul. The demon being one level above the level of our activity is being entirely outside would involve that is if, if he were entirely outside the soul he would be at the level of intellect so see if 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 we choose what is one level above our activity, above the, the, the ontological level of our, that corresponds to our activity, and if the, 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 the demon were entirely outside that, the soul that is at the level of intellect, then the lower soul could not participate in the choice of demon. In mythologized terms, in, in mythologized terms, that would mean that we would be determined by the choice made before being associated with body. The lower soul would not have access to choosing something that is two level below, above, uh, as being exterior, exterior to soul uh, on the level of intellect. So we would only ask. Plotinus says in 3.4, become, uh, actually become what we would have potentially been before having body. But this is not the case. In agreement with what Plotinus explains in 1.1 1, 1 as well, the responsibility belongs to the whole soul. It is therefore also the whole soul, uh, the compound, uh, that is to syntheton, not in the sense of the synamphoteron, which is in one one uh, uh, the the compound of 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 body 
and uh, lower soul or soul that is the living being, but the soul as a syntheton of higher and lower soul that uh, sins that Amartani in one one. And thus, this means that the whole soul uh, has uh, the responsibility of the choices made. And this is why, uh, according to Plotinus, this is also, that is, the, the syntheton, the whole soul, uh, which uh, uh, is punished for Plato and not that other, as Plotinus says, single and simple soul. Uh, uh, that is the responsibility and so the punishment uh, concerns the entire, uh, the entire soul. And for this reason, the demon cannot be entirely outside. So as Plotinus argues in T5, the demon is not completely outside to the extent that it represents an intention, proheresis, and a disposition, diathesis, that we have, by analogy, we might think, to our human intellect considered as a disposition of the soul. On Plotinus' reading of uh, Republic uh, 617, uh, the choice of the souls, Pla Plato gives the power of decision rather to the souls which dispose the antithesis, the, the antithesis, what is given to them. And everything is given to the soul, but they choose uh, what they activate. Uh, so, uh, Plato gives the power of decision to the souls, which uh, uh, can uh, dispose what is given to them according to their own characters. So here we see in T5 that uh, in, in, in Timaeus 90a, uh, Plotinus finds support for the view that the demon is not uh, completely outside. Uh, let me let me read uh, these lines for that this demon is not entirely outside but only in the sense that it is not bound to us and is not active in us but is ours if we speak with respect to our souls but not ours if we are considered as men of a particular kind who have a life which is subject to it, is shown by what is said in the Timaeus. If the passage is taken in this way, that is, in the way uh, in which Plotinus understands it, it will contain no contradiction, machin, but it would have some disaccord, a symphonia, if the demon were understood otherwise, and the fulfiller of what one had chosen is also in accord. So the demon, according to uh, Plotinus, it is outside for two reasons. First, we do not see our uh, demon's activity. If we live at the level of the lower soul, which comes close to the body, our demon is outside just as our higher soul is outside. We are active on a particular level. Our demon is active on the level that is immediately uh, superior to the level uh, of our activity. So to the extent that the demon is not active in us, but our life and activity is subject to it, ipafton, the demon is outside and not ours. Second reason, the demon is not bound to us, missing the demonos. If we change the level on which we are active, if we change our life, the demon changes as well. Our human intellect is bound to the hypostasis intellect. But we are not bound to any particular demon. Our demon can be intellect, 
if we are active on the level of the higher soul. Yet our demon can also be our higher soul or the one depending on our life. So to summarize, the demon is outside and not ours because first reason, our activity in which our life consists is different from the life and activity of the demon and subordinated to it. And second, because by changing our activity, we also acquire a different demon. However, although no demon is strictly ours, our demon is in a way ours in meteros and uh, inside us in a way, because our soul can be in accord with our demon, just as our higher soul can be in accord with intellect. The soul, as we have already mentioned, has this disposition and it can activate it because soul is all things and it can choose which of the forming principles within it it will activate. All forming principles, all uh, logi, logoi, are, as it were, bound to the soul, within the soul, and the soul chooses which one it activates. So the demon is also ours in this sense and not completely outside. So according to Plotinus, uh, Timaeus 90a shows that the demon uh, being a ruling, the ruling part of our soul is ours. On Plotinus interpretation, uh, Timaeus 90a, uh, T6, that is, does not only refer to the relationship between discursive reasoning and intellect, thus evoking the doctrine illustrated by the divided line uh, in Republic 6. It also pertains to uh, the relationship between our soul and its demon by focusing on the most widespread case in which one's demon is one's higher soul. Um, if the passage is taken in this way, that is as Plotinus understands it, uh, then Plotinus says it will contain no contradiction. Uh, but it would have some disaccord if the demon were understood otherwise. This remark shows that Plotinus is aware of other possible interpretations. Which interpretation does he have in, does he have in mind? And what uh, contradiction uh, does he see in them? Um, so, John Rist may be right in suggesting that Plotinus has in mind other interpretations uh, than uh, his own that uh, do not uh, reconcile uh, Plato's uh, Timaeus, where the demon is in the soul, with Republic, with the Republic where the demon is outside the soul. And uh, more recently, Andre Timotin has also underlined the fact that Plotinus undertakes the task of harmonizing the Timaeus and the Kratilos with the Republic and the Fido. However, interestingly, I think that the syntax of Timaeus 90a does not preclude the possibility of understanding the demon as being outside. Thus, as, as we have seen, uh, Plotinus can read uh, the Republic as meaning that the demon is not completely outside. So I think that uh, Plato's uh, uh, um, words 
uh, and this is their, their uh, richness, uh, are open to different readings. So perhaps it is possible to, uh, to read the Greek of 90a uh, as follows. We should think. Um, we should think of, of, of what is near the most lordly kind of our soul as a demon, etc. So instead of taking to the peritu kiriotatu parimin psychis idus as an accusative of, of reference and say with respect to the most lordly kind of our soul, we could perhaps uh, take it as the object of the infinitive dianoiste and say that we can uh, that we must think of what is peri to kiriotatu idus, what is uh, near uh, the most lordly kind of our soul as a demon that God has given, etc. So on that reading, the demon would be placed outside the soul as one would more easily assume the case is in the Republic. And it seems that indeed we find such an interpretation uh, in Plutarch's De Genio. And I must thank uh, Zdenek Lener, um, who I don't know if he's here today because I cannot see who is here and who is not. Uh, but he has drawn my attention. Um, uh, Zdenek has drawn my attention to this uh, passage, which is uh, T14. So now the part carried submerged in the body is called the soul, whereas the part left free from corruption is called by the multitude the intellect, who take it to be uh, within themselves as they take reflected objects to be in the mirrors that reflect them. This reminds a bit I think of uh, the anima uh, gamma five, uh, uh, but those who uh, conceive the matter rightly call it a demon as being external. Here, demon points to uh, Timaeus 90a, uh, and uh, Plutarch obviously considers the demon to be uh, external. So Plotinus. Uh, might uh, have in mind, might uh, be answering uh, two interpretations like uh, this one, like Plutarch's. And uh, I suspect that uh, Plotinus could have at least uh, two difficulties uh, with this interpretation. So from Plotinus' point of view, if the demon were placed outside the soul, that is at the level of on the level of intellect, this would involve that a man active on the level of the lower soul would have intellect as his or her demon, just like a man active uh, on the level uh, of uh, the higher soul. But Plato, uh, in the symposium, in uh, T9, in the handout, tells us that God with man does not mingle, which, as we have seen, in Ennead 6-7, in T7, Plotinus understands as meaning that the third man, the imitation, cannot be directly dependent on a God. In addition, if both the second and the third man, in the sense of uh, six and uh, six seven, were dependent on the first man, the man in intellect, the man in intellect being dependent on the one only, that would introduce uh, uh, some uh, discrepancy into Plotinus' uh, system where its level of reality mirrors the level that is immediately uh, 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 superior uh, to it. So, uh, 
So Mahi, contradiction, uh, and a, a symphonia, this accord in T5, could perhaps be considered in respect of the internal coherence of Plotinus' own system. But above all, I think, uh, they, these terms point to uh, the coherence of Plato's doctrine as uh, reconstructed by Plotinus, as for example, also uh, in Enad 1, 1 in chapter uh, 12, where we find exactly the same uh, uh, related terms, the same combination, Mahunde for Mahi and the Symphony for a Symphonia. So as we learn from Porphyry, Plotinus brought the mind of Ammonius ton Ammonium nun to bear on the investigations in hand. There is some discussion on how to understand the mind of Ammonius. This probably also involves Ammonius philosophy without conflict, as Pasias to Philosophia. According to Hierocles, uh, probably having Porphyry as his source, Ammonius transmitted philosophy without conflict to Plotinus and to his other disciples. It is likely that as Yorgos Karamanolis has argued, Ammonius Sakas said to prove the agreement, the symphonia, between Plato and Aristotle with respect to their basic doctrines. It is also possible that as uh, Karamanolis proposes, Plotinus distanced himself from his master's approach to the extent that uh, he criticizes Aristotle when it is not possible to reconcile him with Plato. Uh, but as uh, Ilse Traut Ado has pointed out, Porphyry did not, agree, uh, did not agree with Aristotle on every point either. So uh, Plotinus may have been an adept of uh, Symphonia almost as much as Porphyry, that is Symphonia between Plato and Aristotle. Whatever the case, uh, today's talk has been an attempt to show uh, how Plotinus could have applied Ammonius' requirement of non-contradiction to the interpretation of uh, Plato's own uh, writings. To Plotinus, demonstrating the coherence of Platonic doctrine would be the necessary means to the truth if one were to attain following Plato's as much as the demons lead the scopos of life, namely union with the God over all. So following Plato by uncovering uh, his doctrine would be uh, to follow one's uh, demon upward to the one. And this is also what uh, Porphyry seems to confirm when he places Plato and Pythagoras together with the Olympian gods, together with Plotinus on the level of intellect. Uh, uh, I, 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 I refer to the, the oracle uh, that uh, Apollo uh, gave uh, for Plotinus. So following Plato uh, by uncovering his doctrine would be to follow uh, the demon upwards to the one and uh, no uh, ritual is needed uh, for that, for uncovering uh, Plato's doctrine, as uh, also uh, the ceremony uh, in uh, the temple uh, of uh, Isis uh, can show us, or rather uh, it is philosophy itself, and especially uh, metaphysics, that is uh, theology, in the Aristotelian sense, uh, that is the highest form of mystery, an idea uh, that goes back to Middle Platonism and to uh, Plato's Symposium um, as well. So it is philosophy itself that is uh, the greatest mystery of which the philosopher is uh, the high priest, the hierophant, uh, if uh, we evoke 
Plotinus' uh, words addressed to Porphyry, you have shown the poet, probably an allusion to Love's, uh, Plato's Law 7, you have shown the poet, the philosopher, and the hierophant. Uh, so thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Irini, for, for this uh, very rich and very, uh, very exciting uh, talk, um, which has combined several aspects indeed, uh, like the literary and philosophical aspect and also the religious uh, thing. And um, so uh, it has raised um, many, many points. And uh, at the very end, you also pointed to the divergence or difference between the hieratic art, art the, the um, uh, theurgy and uh, ritual practice, as opposed to philosophy proper, which is rationally, uh, right, uh, rationally bound and, um, and uh, determined. So um, let's, let's begin with the discussion. I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of questions. So you may raise your hands uh, or write down your comments or questions in the chat. Um, who would like to begin with um, a question? Um, Mr. Kutsukos, please, would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, lower hand. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, really informative. Uh, remind me to uh, brush up on my Plotinus. So uh, what I wanted to ask is uh, when you talked about the um, daimon as a uh, hegemon, right, as taking lead of the souls and uh, leading them. But at the same time, he is, uh, as you said, uh, an external uh, participant, uh, let's say an external entity, right? So uh, I was wondering, is, is there a connection that Plotinus makes about the um, personal daimon, the, uh, this individual daimon as being connected with astrology as having a, a place in the uh, cosmos, a particular place in the cosmos, as Iamblichus kind of says that uh, some people uh, can uh, calculate the origin of the personal daemon as coming from a certain, let's say, constellation or something like that. So does Plotinus, who accepts that the daemon is external, does he also take this kind of mathematical approach, as the Neoplatonists would say, or, or does he not touch upon that at all? Thank you very much. Uh, so um, I think that there must be an astrological uh, dimension to uh, to to this uh, term Yemon. Uh, but I I I admit that I have not uh, much uh, focused on that aspect. So I'm I'm quite ignorant of of uh, ancient astrology. It might be related to the the cani or something like that. I know that, of course, that Plotinus does uh, see uh, a link, and also Porphyry, uh, when when um, he um, uh, he uh, refers uh, to uh, he interprets the myth of Ear uh, in uh, in his uh, in the fragmentary. We only have fragments treatise on what depends on us, uh, which as um, James Wilberding has proposed is probably part of his commentary on the myth of fear. The Porphyry uh, refers uh, explicitly uh, to Egyptian astrology. So there is a uh, related material uh, which I, I, I'm not uh, competent to uh, analyze more. Uh, what I have tried to show, to show today, what I think is that uh, when he calls, when 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 that that Plotinus uh, reads uh, uh in the sense that the demon is active on its own level and it lives its life, and at the same time. Uh, it supervises a soul of a lower level being inactive on the level of that of that other soul. So uh, if the demon is an Igemon, it is an Igemon 
uh, on his own level, on its own level, not on the level of of the soul that it supervises. So, but uh, the astrological aspect, um, I admit that I couldn't say more. But thank you very much. This deserves to be uh, to be um, developed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor uh, William Altman, please. Yeah, I'd like to follow up on Marios's question, because I think that if you're giving a lecture on 3-4, that just saying that you're not an expert in astrology isn't, isn't adequate. Um, that that uh, in the sixth chapter of 3-4, um, I mean, the, the word cosmos comes up a lot, of course, in the chapter, and you realize that, that he's saying that the, there's a cosmos in our soul, and by the time you get, uh, I mean, if you look just for a minute at, at, at 3, 4, 6, uh, say around 20, when he comes to the Taiste Anno, um, and he makes the distinction between the various heavenly bodies like the sun, the moving stars, and the fixed stars, you see where I am, I hope, um, in a steto e helio e he aloton platomenon hai de te aplana that 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 this is calling out for increased attention to astrology it seems to me because he's linking the daimones to heavenly bodies and since part of your argument involved using 90e from the Timaeus if you go a little bit farther from where you were in the Timaeus I mean you gave an alternative reading of the passage about peri uh, to curiatato. But if you go just a couple of lines after that, uh, where Timaeus is talking up about prostetein and urano sungeneon, uh, and uh, a la ura, that, 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 that this is uranion, uh, that, that if you're really going to give an interpretation of 3 4, I mean, it seems like, correct me if I'm wrong, but what it seemed to me you were trying to do was saying, that there is a let's see that that Pla that Plotinus supplies a way of interpreting some highly problematic, mostly mythic passages from Plato's dialogues in a way that uh, harmonize harmonizes them, uh, and of course sidesteps a thousand problems doing that. You know, is Timaeus Plato? Is the myth of Ur? You know, is that a myth? Like, what what level are we? All of those questions are kind of avoided, but what Plotinus really does seem interested in, and climaxes with it in the last chapter, is the cosmos. And, the, and, and, and since you're quoting the passage about the soul is all things, that the cosmos is, that the most outrageous claim in 3-4 is that the cosmos is in the soul. And 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 that and that the daimones are a link, and I think Marios is dead right to point this out, which is that there's an astrological background to three four that 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 is not just simply detachable from it. That 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 that, that if one is going to give an interpretation of three four, one has to deal with the highly dubious claims about the cosmos, the relationship between the daimonia, uh, the daimonios, the daimonas, and the especially the the moving stars. Which I don't even know anything about astrology either, but I know that your sun sign and where Jupiter and Saturn are in your chart is pretty darn important to figuring out what astrologers think the phony baloney explanation for your character is. And so I just. I guess I would just just try to second Marios and just pushing you a little bit further to say that it's just not. I mean, if, if, if we're talking about Plato and we're saying that 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 Plotinus gives an interpretation of certain problematic passages of Plato that harmonize them, that's one thing. But if our topic is 3.4 of the Enneads, then it seems to me you've got to be talking about stars, planets and astrology. So thank you very much for for this uh, remark. I I couldn't agree more in the sense that uh, I think that astrology is not detachable from three four, uh, and this is also why this is also because I take three four to be uh, largely a commentary on the myth of fear, and there we have uh, astrology and. You also mentioned this passage uh, in chapter six, I think, where he says, Plotinus says that 
uh, when we say that the soul is all things, we do not only mean intellect and the one, we also mean the visible universe. So right. there has to be, um, there has to be, uh, one has to take uh, uh, into account um, uh, relevant astronomical theories uh, when um, uh, one attempts to uh, um, give um, a, a, a complete image of, of three, four. But what I wanted to do here is to see how um, Plotinus like puts together uh, these platonic references to the demon. So I have not focused on, on the astronomical side. However, if I attempt to write something, I should read more astronomy in order to uh, be able uh, to uh, make um, uh, to, 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 to give the the, 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 the the wider image. Also the closing of three four uh, is very, in my opinion evocative. It, it evokes the, 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 the spindle of necessity in the means of fear. So we have an image of the universe. We cannot avoid uh, astrology. Porphyry himself, following the lead of Plotinus. When he comments on the myth of fear, he does uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, use a lot of, of astrology, uh, referring to the Egyptians, etc. But this was, has not been my aim here. However, I totally agree. Astronomy is not detachable. It's, it should be a different chapter if one attempted to write a, a book that that's I, that, thank you very okay, much may, let me just um, say a brief very brief comment one thing is astronomy quite another thing is astrology right so uh, i mean there, there is some astronomy yes. in the timeus already but the astrological issue is much later right so and the question is to what an extent astrology is implicated not astronomy but anyway yes uh, I, th I think i think one should make so one should make a distinction between astronomy and astrology yet the distinction was not so clear in antiquity so uh although it is uh it is pertinent i i i i i would say that uh they should be treated in parallel or together. Um, well, there was something else I wanted to say, but I, I forget. Okay, there was uh, the hand of uh, Donna Miller, I saw, but she's uh, perhaps uh, she's not with us any longer. So Sebastian Morrow, please. Uh, hello, thank you very much for your talk. And Congratulations for this wonderful talk. And I wanted to also speak about or ask you about the, um, the relation between uh, the adjective makar and eudemon, no? Because you, uh, it's related to uh, Plotinus' uh, notion of eudemonia in 1 4. And we can say that if we have one good dem demon, we are we have this eudaimonia, but Plotinus is depicted by Porphyry as Makar, no? Makarios. He's blessed uh, because he has this highest demon. So um, we could, we could, and uh, this is connected after listening to the, the comments before about the astrology. We can think of the Pythagoreans talking about these blessed islands, the islands of the blessed, above the sky, no, the heavens. So it's connected to the idea of going outside the, the cosmos and this ascent through the, through the heavens, and also to connect with the original star, because in, in the Timaeus also, going back to the, the original demon is going back to the original star, no, because the demiurge uh, puts the souls in, in, a, in a star as the vehicle, vehicle of, the, of the soul. So I think everything is connected with this idea of not only being Eudemon, but having this paradigm of being Makar or Makarios, which will be to transcend the, 
even the cosmos, no? And to have this uh, this uh, aim of reconnecting with the undescended soul. I think the, I, I I could also ask you if if it's uh, the higher part of the soul is the undescended soul. That could be the intellect, and that could be the demon. But uh, for Plotinus, this undescended soul is even the one, no? But <laughs> there are many things in my question, but I hope it's clear. Thank you very much. So uh, I agree with all these connections uh, uh, between uh, Evdemon and Marker that you have made, uh, for which I, I thank you. I think that uh, the... Pythagorean maxim that you mentioned, what are the, the, the isles of the blessed, the sun and the moon, uh, stands in the background, but this maxim itself uh, uh, seems to uh, stem from, I think, uh, um, or it, at least it, it stems from an interpretation of or exploits uh, Homeric terminology at least. So the, the, the Isles of the Blessed in Isiton Macaron, and Isiton Macaron, that's uh, Homeric. So I think it's uh, uh, when the term is used here to uh, denote uh, who is Evdemon, uh, is uh, giving a new philosophical meaning to a traditional Homeric, uh, Homeric term. This is uh, one thing. Uh, Concerning the higher soul, I would say uh, that the higher soul is not intellect, but it can become intellect. It's not always intellect, but it, it has the possibility uh, to uh, be united with intellect. So to activate uh, this uh, forming principle and become intellect. And when uh, it becomes intellect, it, 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 it it becomes what it most truly is, because the, the soul is essentially a form uh, in Plotinus. And when it is intellect, then it can be uh, illumined by the one. So in that sense, uh, the soul can reach up to the one, but it is not the one, it is not intellect. I don't know if I, if my... Yes, yes. No. yes. Thank it's you very a... much. Thank yes, you very much. Uh, Professor Altman, may I go ahead, please. Yeah, I wanted to ask another unrelated question about your use of that uh, Plutarch passage right at the very end. And I'd just like to second your gratitude towards Deklev uh, to pass on indirectly. I'm very grateful for seeing that passage. I'd like to ask you a little bit about it because um, that it, it, you know, if it, since the question You've been referring a lot to porphyry uh, and the life. I mean that 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 porphyry, of course, when he first met Plotinus, didn't think that the noita were uh, eso nu uh, that they were. He thought they were exo nu, um, and uh, and and the and the, and of course the the battleground on that uh, exo nu that was a very important. Uh, element, right, in the relationship between Porphyry and, and Plotinus in the early days, right? I mean, I, I'm not talking about anything that's too controversial, I hope. It, 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 do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So it's, well, first of all, it seems to me that this passage of, of Plutarch just puts, it puts what I believe is the Platonic position really beautifully, uh, where he says that uh, the hoi polloi, uh, are saying they're calling the noose within. Um, and of course, we're not really used to thinking, I mean, in other words, we're not used to thinking of Plotinus as a card-carrying member of Hoi Polloi, right? We're used to thinking of Plotinus as a pretty esoteric, complicated fellow who is thinking in a boldly original way. But on this basic question of whether this thing is ASO or EXO, it seems to me that this Plutarch passage is aligning Plotinus with hoi polloi. In other words, not just about the daimones, but saying that nous is, is eso, uh, or rather that the hoi polloi 
think that Noos is ASO, whereas the speaker here in Degenio is willing to say, well, only in the sense that the image of a thing is in the mirror. No, the actual thing is exo new. In other words, this passage seems completely antithetical to the spirit, as I understand it, of Plotinus. And I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. Sorry, I couldn't find the mic. So, uh, so I will share screen again. Um, so I think that, so Plutarch is a middle Platonist uh, who holds uh, this view with other middle Platonic philosophers also held before Plotinus. And uh, it seems that there were also some people uh, at that time of Plutarch who uh, thought uh, that uh, intellect, nous, uh, is uh, uh, in interior in a way uh, in us. So, uh, I think that Plutarch is trying to say that if it is, if it seems to be within us, it is because it is a reflection of another kind of light that is outside us, like a uh, And I think that Plutarch may here have also uh, in mind uh, uh, Aristotle, where he in 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 the Anima Gamma uh, uh, Five, where he. Uh, uh, refers to active and passive intellect, saying that um, uh, active intellect is what makes uh, colors uh, visible in the sense. So it is, uh, it, it, one may think that, uh, so in, in a way, the, the intellect that uh, Ipoli uh, take to be uh, inside is only a, a reflection uh, and which is only a reflection would in a way uh, evoke a passive intellect, whereas intellect, true intellect is outside. But then uh, it, it seems also that Plutarch associates this demon, this uh, intellect, which is uh, the true one and which is outside with the Timaeus 90a, uh, which is of course a passage uh, which, to which Aristotle can be close. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, saying that this true intellect, which is outside, is uh, a demon. So I suspect that because Porphyry says that uh, different authors were read in Plotinus seminars, uh, he doesn't mention Plutarch. He gives some names, uh, but many other could have been uh, studied in in the school so perhaps perhaps um uh plotinus uh, had in mind these passages and in a way or other similar um uh views uh, and perhaps uh uh in the school uh he uh tried to say why uh, why the demon is inside uh, as he also tried to show or he asked Amelius to write uh, uh, against Porphyry why um, the forms are, uh, are uh, inside and not outside intellect. So uh, there may be a tension between previous platonic, middle platonic views there and uh, Plotinus uh, novel, you know, platonic uh, interpretation. Um, um, well, I don't know if I have uh, answered to your question or if there is something else that I could add. Would you like to carry on with this discussion? Oh, it has um, perhaps, 
perhaps there is has, a problem. Has, his picture has been frozen, right? Yeah. Um, okay, um, is there um, any other question? Let me just in the meantime, raise a more kind of general question myself. Um, to begin with, you uh, make, I mean, you presented the distinction between the uh, visit to the Iseum and uh, where uh, there was a particular uh, spirit and a particular seance or something like that. And uh, you kind of, uh, 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 Porphyry says that Plotinus exposed his views about uh, about the nature of the diamondness uh, after this kind of activity. And now you come and you say there's much more to that. Uh, you uh, Plotinus is interested in combining and uh, various passages from the Platonic dialogues and bring them into harmony. And so the main thing is coherence, that, that his main driving force, right? But do we have to see the two motivations as um, uh, contradictory or opposing one another rather than having both um, uh, a way but of explaining Plato and also a way of explaining uh, experience such as the religious appearance of a spirit in a in a in a temple or whatever I mean do, do we have to 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 bring the two approaches as wide apart or is there a room for a convergence between the rational demands of the mind and the, the demands of actual experience uh, in, in a religious context? Uh, thank you very much. So um, I think they are not necessarily opposed, not necessarily uh, uh, mutually exclusive. Now, uh, uh, the 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 story that uh, Porphyry tells us uh, clearly happened before Porphyry's uh, coming to Rome, because uh, three four is uh, number fifteen, I think, in the chronological order. Uh, uh, so uh, this is uh, a story that Porphyry heard from someone else, probably Amelius has been proposed, who we know whose interest uh, in uh, religious uh, uh, matters uh, uh, we, uh, we know. So uh, we, 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 we do not really know if we have no, I, 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 we have no reason uh, not to believe this this uh, um, uh, anecdote that uh, Plotinus wrote um, uh, the treatise after uh, this episode, but uh, there is nothing that uh, uh, makes it necessary to believe it either. So we 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 do not really know. I wouldn't have anything against. Uh, uh, against uh, putting the two aspects uh, together. I think that uh, Plotinus' main priority uh, is to uncover uh, what he takes to be uh, Plato's original uh, doctrine. And the, the, the fact that, uh, uh, so, so, he, he is not interested in 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 uh, uh, in in grounding it in 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 ritual experience, rather grounding his theory in ritual experience, but rather in in Plato's own own words. But then, if we turn to the uh, uh, episode in the in the Temple of Isis. There, the story, the fact that the the the, the priest uh, uh, recognizes uh, that uh, Plotinus has a higher uh, guide uh, guardian spirit, uh, shows that perhaps there is a way 
a philosophical, uh, the two ways, the philosophical and the religious one, uh, are not are not incompatible. So there are different different ways of 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 reading uh, the evidence. Uh, so, but the accuracy, the the the, the the accuracy of Porphyry's account on the on the seance in the Iseum has been put into question. Okay, one one may doubt every every kind of thing, but uh, uh, on the other hand, we do know that uh, Porphyry, I mean, Plotinus wrote down things as they occurred in the classroom. So there was always kind of a temporary aspect. I mean, something that was immediately um, uh, urging, uh, er urgent, uh, something like it, it was the general question and there was a, a particular perhaps uh, event that uh, brought up the need to investigate and write down. So I think that the two might not be contradictory, but fine. Um, no, it is not impossible. It is not impossible. I think I, I agree with you. Then, generally, we generally think that uh, it is generally considered that uh, Plotinus was less interested in in religious matters than Porphyry and later uh, Neoplatonic philosophers. And there is this famous quote that uh, uh, it it is not me who should uh, go to the gods, but the gods should rather come to me. Uh, which was his answer to to Amelius. So uh, perhaps uh, um, such rit rituals were not uh, rejected by Plotinus, but they were simply not his main interest. I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Altman. Please. First of all, I'm very sorry to cut out. I, I, my power went out in my building and I, lo I lost your reply, but I already, from what you had said when you brought up Aristotle, I mean, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to go back to that Plutarch thing because that, that was where I was when I'll, I lost the internet. Um, it, 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 you know, to say that, Plut that Plutarch's a middle Platonist and then to use Aristotle, I just, uh, what, 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 what suggests to me, and part of the reason I'm grateful to you and Declev, is that this seems to me to be another reason for thinking that Plutarch read Alcibiades Major um, with those disputed lines in it, 133 C8 to 17. You know the passage that I'm talking about? Because you've got the reference to the mirror here, and you've got the reference to external here. And so it doesn't seem to me that we're looking at some middle platonic deviation. And since your paper is really about Plato, it seems to me, for reasons that we discussed earlier, is that really what Plutarch is doing is channeling those controversial lines. And as you know, some people have claimed they're a neoplatonic edition. I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> I see them more as a neoplatonic de neoplatonic deletion. In other words, they are very much in harmony with what Plutarch is saying in De Genio. He's saying that 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 the mirror that that the mirror in us, uh, well, has as he puts it, uh, that. That hotheos is tu ento hemeterapsuke beltisteron. In other words, that the God that's external to us is clearer than the mirror in our soul. Um, and so uh, rather than bring Aristotle into this, I just would suggest that 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 what Plutarch is really channeling is Plato. Uh, and, and, and a passage in Plato that has, as it were, gone missing. Do you have any thoughts about that Eusebian edition, by the way, or whatever people like to call it? I'd be curious. Uh, so, thank you. Concerning, I, uh, okay, you are not frozen. Uh, concerning the first Falkiviadis, I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I recall the passage that you mentioned, but uh, there, there is a passage on mirroring uh, the eyes that that mirror. This is the passage you are referring to. It's but it's right after that passage. In other words, he's dealt he's dealt with the mirror in the eye, and he's just gotten up to a passage that's very friendly to a Plotinian view, which is that Theon and Phronason are the same thing. And then there are these missing lines that we know from Eusebius, and I think uh, maybe from Stobaeus, but certainly from Eusebius, that 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 talk about that that that, that talk about the mirror our mirror as 
as being less clear than the external God that is caught in it. So it, it's it's really an aso exo battle. It's the aso exo battle, which in our present manuscripts of Plato seems to have been won by the aso people by getting rid of C8 to 17. But those lines are there, and there's been a pretty healthy debate about whether they were in the dialogue. So that's just a passage you might be interested in looking at if you're at all interested in this Plutarch De Genio passage, which again, thank you so much for bringing that up. That is gold for me. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I, I should have a look at this passage of Alcibiades first, but um, yeah. listening to you, I think it is possible that uh, it stands in the background here. As I also said, I also think that it is possible that uh, Plotinus read Plutarch in the seminars and perhaps he uh, is answering to Plutarch's view or to similar views. But thank you, I will have a look at that passage of Alcibiades first. Great, I'd, I'd, I'd love to talk with you about it if you do, because I'm really interested in it. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. Professor, please. Yes, I am, and I, I'm remi I'm remembering that also in the Alcibiades, uh, Plato mentions the inner man and the external man that we can live according to uh, our inner man, that is the soul, and the, the real man is our soul inside. So there is also this idea of inner and uh, external kind of life that is connected to what you say that is very important in your in your uh, paper about the activating different principles in us no that that i think is is very important that we can live uh, changing our own ontology no living according to to this inner person activates us in a way but if i can ask a, a little question <laughs> is is it related to our previous life that we we can be able to uh, make this choice in the midst of earth it, it depends of, of on our previous life and the, the idea of reincarnation that we need a demon a demon to help us incarnate in a good way, following these uh, forks in the road. And this will help us to, to be able to develop this uh, prince inner principle. If if we if we are uh, in different lives in a way uh, developing this inner soul. Yes, thank you. I, I think it is related to uh, reincarnation, but not only to that, in the sense that if we uh, have a, a human a human form and we are, um, uh, yes, if, if we are human beings, but uh, it is possible for us uh, to activate the forming principle of a beast and live the life of a beast while being uh, human. This means that uh, our uh, guardian spirit in this life will be at the level of the higher soul. Uh, uh, not, not even that, because we, we won't live at the level of the lower soul, but even lower at the level of a beast. And this probably means that uh, when our soul, uh, when, when we die with respect to the present life, uh, and uh, we come back for a new uh, human, for a new life on earth, that would be the life uh, of the beast to which uh, our activity corresponded in the previous life. So this is um, um, the, also the topic which we, with which uh, Porphyry deals in on what, depend, uh, on what depends on us. And there he gives the solution of, of two choices. One choice that is made before, uh, before being associated with body, and the second choice that uh, is related to our choices here below, uh, while we are associated with body. So I think that the it has to do with reincarnation, but not only with that. That is, uh, if 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 we live at the level of the higher soul. Uh, this uh, does not only mean that uh, we uh, shall be uh, reborn uh, at a, a corresponding level. It also means something about uh, our uh, life here and now. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, okay, there's a, is there any other question? Uh, I don't see any raised hand now, and nor um, anything on the chat. Uh, just uh, let me say a, a brief, a very brief quote. What I mean, uh, you, you emphasized um, Plotinus' uh, desire to go back to Plato's original doctrine and to show the coherence of that doctrine, right? But don't you think that, uh, I mean, even the, the two things, the, the, the question of truth, of what is the case, and the question of what Plato says are for Plotinus one, two aspects of the same question. So he goes back to Plato because truth is there rather than because he wants to defend an authority, right? Would you agree with that? So I mean, Absolutely. even Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So even even beyond uh, wanted to defend Plato, he wants to defend truth. truth. Okay. Yeah. So, and this is and, also and that ties very well with even the exp experiential aspect of uh, of uh, the daemon. I mean, because it's something that can be perceived in particular. I mean, that that doesn't contradict. That that line of thought, I would I would think. No, uh, I think I, I I agree with you. So I think that uh, demonstrating the coherence of of Plato's uh, of of Plato's writings, and thus defending Plato's authorities, is not Plotinus' uh, end in itself. It is not an end. It is a means to the truth. So uh, in a way. Understanding Plato uh, is something that we have to do in order to uh, reach the truth. And this truth has also, uh, it is not just uh, something that has to do with uh, what we know, but also with what we are. So uh, uh, attaining the scopos of life. That's why I think that uncovering Plato is uh, almost following uh the Plotinus demon in a, in a mm -hmm. sense it's okay. more than just authority or harmonization thank, thank you very much um i think it's almost i mean nine o'clock here in greece and uh, we've been uh together for, for two whole hours i think uh we can thank uh, Irini, so much for this talk and this uh, excellent discussion and very, very stimulating talk and topic as well. And uh, thank you all for being here and uh, raising questions. And um, we'll uh, see each other, yes, um, um, on, on the next talk. Um, Irini, thank you very much. And thank you for being here, for being with us. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you all. Thank you all. See you next month with Professor uh, Golitsi's talk. I think it is on the on the twenty second of March, and it is on the commentary on on uh, on the Parmenides uh, by Damascus. Thank you all for for the discussion and for being here tonight. And thank you, Spiros. Thanks a lot, Irini. Thank you very much.